It's the last day of Bus Pirate Week, and we wanted to do something fun. Uh, all week in the forum, we've been talking about a component tester. That's a little device where you can put a capacitor or resistor or transistor into it, and it'll measure it and figure out what it is and show you the key values. A couple people have built some different designs, and we're studying some source code to figure out how to build our own. So for the last day of the Bus Pirate Week, we hacked the Bus Pirate firmware to measure capacitors. We're going to show you how we did that today, and also later, we're going to unbox all these parts that arrived from Mouser. This is our setup for measuring capacitors with the Bus Pirate. We've got a Bus Pirate version 3 over here. We've got two of the I.O. pins connected to resistors and then connected to one side of the capacitor and the other is just connected to the ground of the Bus Pirate. We just put any capacitor we want to test between the ground and the resistors there. So this is how you measure a capacitor with the Bus Pirate or really any microcontroller. We've got the clock pin of the Bus Pirate hooked through a 100K resistor to the positive part of the capacitor and an auxiliary pin of the Bus Pirate connected through a 20 ohm resistor also to the positive part of the capacitor. When we start, we drain the capacitor to make sure it's completely empty. So we turn the clock pin to ground and the volts in the capacitor, the voltage in the capacitor, goes from whatever it is to zero. Once we're sure it's at zero, we turn on a timer and we start charging the capacitor through the 100K resistor. It has a 100K of resistor and that limits the current, so the charge actually builds fairly slowly. And we time how long it takes until we see a high level on the auxiliary pin through this 20 ohm resistor. When that happens, we stop the timer and the time between when we started charging and when it reached the high level tells us how big the capacitor is. A bigger capacitor will take longer to charge at any given current. Now there's a major shortcoming here and that is at the high level, the level at which a microcontroller senses a high or a one on its pin varies between every chip. Uh, every bus pirate will have a slightly different level where the pin flips and senses the high voltage from the capacitor. So it's not a very exact measurement and it's not something you would want to do if you made more than one of a device. A better solution is an analog comparator. Here we have a 2.5 volt reference voltage for example and it's fed into one side of the comparator and on the other side we also attach to the capacitor and when it reaches 2.5 volts the comparator trips and tells the microcontroller that we've reached the charge voltage. That's way more accurate and way more repeatable if we do a commercial design. I've got a hacked firmware on the bus pirate where the frequency command has been changed to measure the capacitor. You can download the firmware on the forum. We'll put a link to it below the video in the post. You just use the F command in any mode and it will do the capacitor measurement routine. So now it discharged the capacitor and then charged it through the 100K resistor and it counted how long it took before it saw a high level on the other pin. And in this case it took uh, 145,000 ticks of the timer. Now we measured a couple different capacitors in the under 1 UF range and found out that there were about 14,000 or sorry 1480 ticks per NF of capacitance. So we programmed that in there to divide this. If you divide this by 1480, you'll get about 98. Here we've got a 10 UF capacitor. We'll measure the frequency of that. See, and it's uh, in the neighborhood, but given that we haven't done any calibration other than measuring with several different 0.1 UF capacitors, it's amazing it works at all. Uh, next we'll take up a 100 UF capacitor and you'll see here when we do the 100 UF capacitor it actually takes a really long time to charge this capacitor and measure it. The way we get around this is in a final design actually having several different values of charging resistors then if we start charging with the 100K resistor and it takes too long, then we can move down to maybe a 50K resistor or even a 10K resistor for huge capacitor. That's how you measure a capacitor with the Bus Pirate. 
It's not super accurate. It's not going to win any awards. But we did learn how to do it using the hardware that we already had available. The firmware for this is available on the forum. Grab it if you'd like to try it out yourself. The bus pirate hardware will never be able to be a full featured component detector because it lacks the analog to digital comparators to measure the voltage when you test a transistor. We'll need custom hardware for that, but this was a good start. Now we'll go take a look at that big box of parts from Mouser. We've been making a big push to get a bunch of new projects out there. We've got some ARM development boards, uh, an Android accessory development kit, a Bus Blaster version 4 and version 3 coming down the pike. Those will have different features, so we'll keep producing the same ones. We've got an Arduino uh, weather radio shield. This should be a lot of fun. Shock's going to solder the QFN chip on that. Um, and then we've got this, which is a SMD practice soldering board. And it's got just a ton of LEDs on the front and a really reasonable hand solderable SMD size. And on the back it has a number of uh, SOIC easy to solder chips. And we're going to put that together with a, a kit of uh, flux, a little bit of fine gauge solder, and some tweezers to help you get started. So for all that stuff we needed a whole bunch of parts and we ordered our most common parts in reels and those haven't arrived yet but I just got the big box of parts from Mouser. This is mostly the stuff that wasn't important enough to buy in reels that we don't use often enough to buy in reels. And I thought I would just shuffle through it, show you some of the interesting stuff. A lot of it is just resistors. We got these, I forget what kind we got but the current resistor we bought was about uh, I believe it was one dollar for a hundred. They're less than a penny a piece, maybe 80 cents when we got a hundred. As you can see, we just got a ton of resistors in quantities of 100 or 200. A lot of those. And then we've got potentiometers uh, for the soldering iron driver board that's coming up. And these ATX power supply connectors are for something Shock's working on. Here's the LPC arm chip for that arm board that we're cooking up. Here, of course, whenever you're working with through-hole, you end up buying 100 uh, through-hole 0.1 UF capacitors. That's what we've got in here. When you buy 100, it's, I forget, 3 or $4. It's not very expensive. I picked up 25 HC595. That's a serial to parallel output IC. These are all in SOIC, and they go on the back of the soldering iron driver board or sorry, the back of the SMD practice board. Now here's some stuff that we don't usually stock. These are the triax and the power switching things for the soldering iron driver. Uh, here, we, we tried to buy these in bulk. We tried to buy these by a reel, but we couldn't get anybody to quote us a price on one that was really cheap, or as cheap as the ones we could get from Mouser or DigiKey already. So this is a 3.3 volt regulator in that tiny SOT223, uh, or SOT23-5 package that we use on the Bus Pirate and the Logic Sniffer, and most of our stuff uses it. It's a little three volt regulator, and one of the pins is a switch, so you can turn it on or off. If you just want it on all the time, you wire it to the main power supply. Now, these are something that's hard to find. People always have trouble sourcing these. These are the resistor arrays. There's four resistors packed into one, and we use these increasingly because if you have a lot of resistors in your design, you end up placing a lot of parts and it's cheaper and easier for the producer if they only have to put one resistor array instead of four individual resistors. So we're using those a lot, and if you have trouble finding them, they're on our part list wiki, which we'll link to in the post below. That looks like about everything important in this order. We'll show you the unboxing of the reels when they arrive in a few days, too. Yes, that's what the internet's for. Two minutes of a guy rummaging through a box. So while I was editing the video, the big bag of reels arrived. So we'll have a bonus unboxing in a couple minutes. Thanks for tuning into Bus Pirate Week. We'll have more videos next week, mostly building things up using all the parts that arrived today.